Good morning. My name is Claudia Brown Coulter from Brownie Culture. I'm a divorce mediator and I help you create a customized divorce that you can uncouple consciously and respectfully. So today I wanted to talk to you about custody based upon age. So before we start, I want to acknowledge that, well, first of all, I got people back here. My neighbors are doing something in the backyard. They got construction workers there. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm not in control of that. So I apologize if you can't hear everything. Um, but most importantly, I want to acknowledge that depending upon the type of person you're divorcing, the custody issue can be really easy. Like, oh yeah, no problem. We got this, 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 and this. We already know. Or it can be really difficult. And for the people who it's a really difficult issue and you're scared, I want to encourage you that just try to watch this video anyway. This is two parts. We're going to cover ages zero months to five years today, and then we'll go from six to 18 tomorrow. But force yourself to listen because sometimes when you're really scared, you just want to put your head in the sand and not hear anything about it. But I need you to be empowered and I need you to be prepared. It will be okay. If you've got people telling you scary things, stop listening to them. Stop listening to them. If that's not helping you, don't listen to them. Listen to these things today so you can think about where, how often your child should go or your children should go back and forth. Now, we're not specifically talking about a parenting plan, like what days and all that, but just some general ideas to think about the needs of your kids. The other thing is I have a lot of notes written here, and it's just impossible for me to not look at them. So I'm going to be looking at them quite a bit to make sure that I don't miss anything. But please know that I will most likely write this into a blog and post it on my website, which is browningculture.com so that you can access this and I'll have references there so you know which books I got this information from. That way, if you want to go and read them yourself, you, you are certainly welcome to do so. And then one other thing. I use the word custody in, in this uh, post because that's kind of what we understand. But the more I use custody, the more I feel like I'm exchanging a criminal. Like... My kid has got chains on, on his hands. He's got the ones on his feet where he can't walk, maybe a muzzle. He's got a bright orange suit. So I don't like to use the word custody too much because it sounds like somebody was arrested and is now in prison and we got to go to court. So the court has like, it. these are little people and little humans who have not committed any crimes and they are, they, they are in your care. They are in the other person's care. So I use custody just for ease of use, but know that I really, the more I use it, the more I hate that term because they're not little criminals. All right. So let's talk about babies. And so each phase that we're going to talk about some of these issues, they, they, they progress with the child as they grow. And some of them only present when the separation or the divorce happens. And some of these are, are really temporary and you might not see this at your kids for your kids at all. So if your child is an infant, so zero to 18 months, you know, that beginning toddler stage, they are going to need frequent daily contact with both parents because they need to establish that trusting relationship with both parents. Now, especially when the child is really little, if they're a breastfed baby, you're, it's going to be very, very difficult to do overnights. Uh, a divorce, unless that mom has a lot of milk, and I'm sorry if this is gross to you, but if you've got a baby and you're living in the house with her, then you already know this. If the mom has a lot of milk and she's pumping and it's frozen and that milk can go with you, great. But sometimes in stressful situation, that milk dries up. It is, it is harder for that mother to produce milk. So before the baby's weaned, overnights are going to be very difficult and, and let me say this, um, um, breastfeeding is not easy. And yes, it's a natural thing, but it doesn't always come naturally. And it's hard sometimes to have a breastfed baby because they don't sleep as well during the night. They, their bellies don't get as full. 
so I don't want you to think that the woman is breastfeeding the baby to keep the baby from you. Oh, she just breastfeeding him so he can't come with me overnight. Breastfeeding is a labor of love. Emphasis on labor. Okay? So they, they, they will grow out of that stage. They'll grow out of that stage. So especially once they're weaned, yes, they should definitely be having overnights with the other parent, but you want to gradually introduce them and you want to keep your child's stress level as low as you possibly can. So that means even though they're little and they aren't really understanding, you want to do your best to not argue and fight in front of them. You want to keep their stress level low, especially as a baby, their brains are developing. They, um, they're they taking in everything. They need to eat. They need to sleep. And you don't need them too stressed out where they can't eat and they can't sleep. Because if they can't eat and can't sleep, guess who else not sleeping? Guess who's more stressed? Oh, I just want to cry, right? You're just like, this is, my life is terrible right now. Nobody's sleeping. It gets better. It gets better. Okay. So they can be especially clingy with the primary caregiver. Now, um, someone has said to me before, well, two people can be primary caregivers. So why is it called primary? Okay. Uh, all right. That's fine. But, you know, be realistic about it. We also recognize the fact that in a, in a household, people have different roles and different chores. And someone is always parenting in a house when you're living together is never cut down the middle 50-50. Oh, I gave him a bath two nights in a row. You get two nights in a row to give him a bath. That doesn't happen. So, you know, roles are split and they're different. Okay? So just, you know, be flexible with that. Now, for your little ones, they might be able to do FaceTime with the other parent if the parent, you know, with the parent that they're not with. But I would caution you only do that if your child is ready because sometimes seeing that other parent can create so many emotions in them. They start crying. It's not good. And then you start crying and it's not good. So if they can't handle FaceTiming with the other parent or you can't handle FaceTiming with them, don't do it. You could also, when the world opens back up, you can go to Build-A-Bear. I know it's not cheap. Or you can go someplace else. Hi, Andrea. How are you? It's I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for watching my video. Um, you can go to Build-A-Bear and, you know, you could take your child and they could build a bear. And I know that they have little recordings that you can put like in the foot of a of an animal. And then that kid, that child or the other parent, sorry, I hope you can't hear the construction outside. The other parent can then push that little button and then the child can hear the other parent's voice. Sometimes that can be comforting to the child. It's probably not comforting to you, but it's not about you, right? Okay, sometimes it is about you, but you know, teach your kid to press the button yourself, themselves when you're in the other room. Okay, so when they are really in that toddler stage, they're 18 months and then all the way up to three years old, your child needs a ton of physical affection. Don't withhold the affection just because you are hurting, just because your life feels like it's falling apart. Give them lots of hugs. It'll make you feel better. Give them lots of kisses. Reassure them. You want your child to be curious and encourage that curiosity. You don't want them to be overstimulated because once again, if they're overstimulated, they're not going to eat. They're not going to sleep. And your life's going to be terrible. And you also don't, you might want to, but I would like to encourage you not to. Don't overstimulate your child and then send them to the other parent and then just make that other parent's life awful. So sometimes overstimulation can just be like tons of people at the house, tons of things to do. You, you want to minimize that. Hey, you know what? I forgot to mention something earlier, especially with the babies. If there's a familiar toy that they have with you, have the other parent get that toy too. If the other parent doesn't get that toy, you have to think, okay, well, is this about me or is this about my kid? How much was this toy? Five bucks, buy an XX toy, put it in the diaper bag, send it on their way because that's comfort for your child. Okay, um, at this age, they may think if you're gone, they may think you've disappeared. They may think that you've abandoned them. So I want you to reassure them that you haven't you haven't gone anywhere, that, that you are still there. That's where a FaceTime comes in nicely or a Builder Bear toy where you can push the foot and you can be talking to your child at, your other, at their parents' house. 
at this age, any frequent exchanges. Now, here's my caution for this age. Even though your children at this age are developing their language and they can talk, they don't always do a good job of expressing themselves. So listen to me when I say, don't forget to feed them. Don't forget to feed them. If you pick them up like at four o'clock, one parent may have given them a snack, but don't turn around to your kid at seven o'clock and be like, oh, are you hungry? Yes, they are hungry. And even though they know how to say hungry, maybe they're not comfortable expressing it. Maybe there were a whole bunch of adults around and they couldn't tell you. Maybe you're not as in tune to their cries and whines and um, things like that, that the other parent is. Maybe you're not hungry, but they are. So don't forget. And hey, if you're not the primary caregiver and you forget to feed the kid, okay, don't tell the other parent. And just learn. Do better. Learn. You'll get the hang of it. You will get the hang of it. And remember that your child needs you too. Okay, they need both parents. They need you. So if you forget to feed them, everybody makes mistakes, feed them. Okay, that's your that's your reminder. All right, ages three to five, they are very, very aware of what is going on. And while they can't read yet, most of them, I mean, you could have a color chart in your refrigerator, but most importantly, it's just important to prep them. Hey, okay, all right, kiddos, I will see you in a couple of days. You are going to your mommy's house. Okay, and this is what we're going to do when you get back. Or I will see you in three days because you're going to daddy's house this weekend and I will pick you up from daycare on Monday. You need to prepare them for that. And you need to prepare them from transitions anyway. Like, all right, well, in five minutes, we're coming in from outside. They need, they need prep. It'll make your life easier. It'll minimize fits. It's not going to eliminate fits, but it's going to minimize fits. Um, you want to promote their positive self-image. Because at this point, they could be thinking, oh, something was wrong with me, and that's why mommy left. Or something's wrong with us, that's why dad doesn't love us anymore. Don't allow your kids to, if you're aware of that thinking, don't allow them to uh, perpetuate in that thinking. So promote their positive self-image. Oh, no. That was between mommy and daddy, or mommy and mommy, or daddy and daddy. We love you. We will always love you. Just because we're getting a divorce, we could never divorce you. Now, at this age, they may feel like, they may feel like, let's run a parent trap, even though they're not sophisticated enough. You need to gently let them know, we're not, we're not getting back together. We're not getting married. We're, again, we're not doing this. And just be gentle and then move on. Okay? Just, you, know, you, don't have to have a, you don't have to have a lecture. They're not old enough to understand everything. Just be gentle. What's really important at this age, and it's, sometimes it's really hard, especially if you've, you're going through a divorce and you don't see your kids as much. You just want to love them. I just want to love you. Love you. I'm putting this in quotes, okay, on purpose. Because we love our kids, yes, by affection and giving them, them things and taking care of them, but we also love them by setting limits. Why do I feel like I'm preaching? I'm sorry. I'm not trying to lecture you at all. Sometimes we need help with this. Sometimes you need outside people to be like, why do you let your kid talk to you like that? Why do you? No, that's not okay. You, you have to be teachable and humble enough to be like, ooh, you're right. So you want to remember to set limits with your children. It's loving. Who cares if they hate you? They're three. They're four. They're five. Who cares? You love them by setting limits. No, that's not okay. There was a timeout coming. This is not acceptable. I had a really good thought. And it's gone. Oh well. Um, if you're if you're already separated and they're this age, then they they're used to this. Yes, Andrea. Yes. <laughs> Seti Limits is good. Andrea's got three fabulous children. I have not met her husband yet, but her kids are amazing. And she's an amazing teacher. And so, yes, setting limits is really good. And I will tell you, even if you're a teacher, sometimes, and you could set limits with your, your classroom kids, sometimes it's really hard to set limits with your own kids. It's better for you. It's better for them. If you are, if they're in this age range from three to five and you're separating, you're divorcing at this time, they may regress. Uh, their toilet training may regress. They may not, they may no longer sleep through the night. They may revert to more babyish talking. They may not be as uh, risky eaters or um, adventurous eaters. 
So you're going to need to extend grace. So you extend grace and you still set limits. Please be on time for your pickups and exchanges. So you don't ever want your kid to say to the daycare provider, how come mommy only picks me up when it, she always picks me up when it's dark, but daddy picks me up when it's daylight. Go get your kid. You ain't got that much time with them anymore. Go get them. Or how come mommy's always on time, but daddy's always late. Right? You, you want to be, it helps them. It helps them. So be on time and cherish that time that you have with them. And um, just as a paradigm shift, especially for the person who's the primary caregiver, sometimes it's like, oh my God, why are you taking my kid away? This is my child. Well, it's their child too. But I want you to think about all of those parents right now or that you know whose kids are going off to college and they are a mess because they, and then the kids aren't as independent and they're a mess and they don't know what to do and they're crying and what am I going to do about my baby's God? Well, look, you're going through it now, right? That's a, that's a, I'm sorry. I'm, a, I'm not going to apologize for that. I am a Pollyanna. I grew up on that movie. Thank you, Haley Mills. So you can kind of spin this for your own mind to go, well, they're getting used to going someplace else. They're not as dependent upon me. It's good for them. It'll help me when they move out and go to college. It, it's a good thing, and I'm getting a head start on that. They need to see their primary caregiver every three to four days. So this is not the age to be like, okay, you see your dad in a week. Or you'll see your dad, your mom in a week. No, or in five days. Every three to four days, they should be seeing their primary caregiver. And then my last thing that I want to say, and this, gosh, this is going long. If you stuck with me this long, Andrea, thank you. Uh, thank you for watching. When your child, especially if you're the primary caregiver, if they go to the other person's house, they may be perfect. They may be on their best behavior. And then they come back and they're little, they're little demons. And you're like, what possessed you over there? I know he or she was doing some witchcraft over there. No, no, maybe, but probably not. So here's what happens. Sometimes kids are on their best behavior for the parent who left. Uh, because they don't want them to leave them. Sometimes kids aren't sure to express uh, how to express themselves. So maybe if you're the primary caregiver, they're more comfortable with you. So they're more likely to act out with you because it's your, your, you are a safe person for them to act out and act a fool. So you still set limits in that, but you continue to give them grace. So just be prepared for that. If they don't have a lot of choice, and you still want to give your cho your kids choice even at this age, if they don't have a lot of choice, they don't have a lot of say in what happens in their lives, then they may come home and need to, they may have some pent up energy. You know how like when you're at work and your boss doesn't listen to you and you're just going like, oh my God, they might have some pent up energy and they got to run in the backyard. Don't take it personally and don't think that you're, you're, you're soon to be ex has contacted the devil and signed a contract with him and now your child is evil. No, no. And so it'll get better. Let me encourage you again. I know that custody and t thinking about custody can be incredibly terrifying, but it doesn't have to be that way. All custody orders are temporary. You can always go back to the mediator and change them based on your child's needs. If you are worried about making a mistake, take some time to sleep on it. If you are a religious person or have religious roots, this is really a good time to get back in touch with your religion, no matter what it is. Even if you're an atheist and you don't have religion or you don't believe in God, I'm sure that you do something. And if you are that person, I'd love to hear what you do to kind of quiet and center yourself. This is the time to shut out those outside voices and center yourself and get in touch with yourself and go, what do I know is best for my kids? You're not going to go wrong. You're not going to go wrong. You're going to, you need to err on what is best for your kids. So once again, my gosh, I just rambled. I just talked and talked and talked. Thank you for listening this whole time. I'm Claudia Brown Coulter from Brownie Culture. I know, I know that divorce can be scary. It can be. And sometimes it is. My job, part of my job here and why I'm here on these live videos is to help you to be calm and to make sure that you are empowered. I have faith in you. I know you can do this. Your life is only going to get better. And if you make decisions in the best interest of your children, their lives are only going to be better for it. Hey, you guys have a great day. Join me tomorrow. I'll be talking about ages six 
to 18. Thank you for watching. I hope I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Andrea, have a great day.